AD all day. In the past few videos, we were making simple absolute value translations that I tend to make from memory. Now we'll start looking at still simple absolute value expressions. So ones I can still solve algebraically, but that require more of a systematic approach. And before we do an actual GMAT problem, let's just take a look at a simple example to see the logic I'm using when I get rid of my absolute value signs. So here on the left side, if I were to tell you that X is equal to five and then would ask you what is the absolute value of X? Well, the absolute value of X is just absolute value of five. And so in this case, the absolute value of X is also equal to five. Or in other words, you can say the absolute value of X in this case is just equal to X. Now on the right side, similar question. So say I were to tell you that X is equal to negative five and then ask, what is the absolute value of X? So in this case, absolute value of X is equal to absolute value of negative five, which means once again, absolute value of X is equal to five. However, in this case, that means absolute value of X is equal to negative X. Because remember, X was negative five, and therefore negative X is positive five. So if we put these two concepts together, what you might see is that for any absolute value expression, the absolute value of X can only be equal to two things. Absolute value of X is either equal to X or absolute value of X is equal to negative X. And those two values account for 100% of the possibilities for the absolute value of X. And so now the only question left to answer is when are each of these scenarios true? So when is the absolute value of X equal to X? And when is the absolute value of X equal to negative X? And absolute value of X is equal to X when X is greater than zero, or I should say greater than or equal to zero. And in this case here, absolute value of X is equal to negative X. And so that would be when X is less than zero. So you can see this is where I think people's heads start spitting a bit when talking about absolute value, because in this case here, remember what we said, negative X is equal to positive five. So with absolute value, I try to steer away sometimes from the terms positive and negative. And I try to say greater than zero or less than zero. But if I can make these two translations, I can get rid of my absolute value signs. And then I can just solve for my variable using simple algebra. So now let's take a look at an absolute value problem where we try to do that. I believe this is the first GMAT problem we've seen that uses absolute value equations instead of inequalities. And so just glancing at our question here, some things you might notice are absolute value expressions seem to be getting a little bit more complicated than in the previous questions. For example, we have these algebraic expressions on each side of our equations here. However, we still only have one absolute value expression and we only have one variable within our absolute value sign. So that means I would still categorize this as a simple absolute value translation, which means I should still be able to do it algebraically. So my goal here is once again to get rid of my absolute value sign. The question says, is X equal to 13? Literally no information, just a question. So on to our statements. Statement one says the absolute value of 4X plus 11 is equal to 5X minus 2. Now, even though we have an expression under our absolute value signs, it's no different than if we just had the absolute value of a single variable, such as the, we'll say the absolute value of A. It's just in this case, A just happens to be equal to 4x plus 11, because we said once we have the absolute value, there's only two things this could be equal to. And so when a is greater than zero, absolute value of a is equal to a. And when a is less than zero, absolute value of a is equal to negative a. So here it is no different. We just have two scenarios, two possibilities for what 4x plus 11 could be. Four x plus 11 is either greater than or equal to zero. 
4 or x plus 11 is less than 0. And so these two scenarios account for 100% of our possibilities for what 4x plus 11 could be. And so in this case here, when 4x plus 11 is greater than or equal to 0, the absolute value of 4x plus 11 is just equal to itself. So this was the case where absolute value of 5 is equal to 5. And so absolute value of 4x plus 11 is just equal to 4x plus 11. And then I can just plug that in. I can replace my absolute value expression here with this to just get 4x plus 11 is equal to 5x minus 2. So notice the only thing that is changing here is the left side, the side with my absolute value expression. So if we do the same thing here, so in this case, when 4x plus 11 is less than 0, and so that is the case where absolute value of x is equal to negative x, or in this case, absolute value of 4x plus 11. Remember, so we got to reverse the whole thing. We're multiplying the whole thing by negative 1. So absolute value of 4x plus 11 would be equal to negative 4x minus 11. And I can then just replace my absolute value expression with this expression over here to get negative 4x minus 11 is equal to 5x minus 2. So then the next step is just to solve for each of these two equations for x and see what my answer is now. It looks like we're heading towards insufficient, right? Because it looks like we're going to have two values for x. And so let's see if that is in fact the case here. And so on our left side here, so this is uh, if we subtract 4x from each side, we get x and add 2 to each side. What do we x is equal to 13? So what is this? Remember, our question is just asking, is x equal to 13? So this is a yes. To our question. So it looks like we're probably going to get a no here to our question, I'm guessing. If we add 4x to each side, then also add 2 to each side, we get 9x is equal to negative 9. Therefore, x is equal to negative 1, which is a no to our question. So it looks like indeed we got one value for x that is equal to 13, one that is not. Therefore, this should be insufficient. But before we go canceling out our answer choices, not so fast, because there is one last step here. We are not done yet, because when we have these absolute value equations where we got rid of our absolute value sign and made these two algebraic equations out of it, there's one last step that you always have to do. And you might have been scratching your head a bit at the beginning when we did this. So what you have to do is once you get a value here for x, once you solve for it, you then have to plug it back in to this inequality up top. Because the reason you have to do this is because we are the ones that made these designations. We said this here is the scenario where 4x plus 11 is greater than or equal to 0. And this here is the scenario where 4x plus 11 is less than 0. Because that is the scenario when absolute value of 4x plus 11 is equal to 4x plus 11. And over here, this is the scenario when absolute value of 4x plus 11 is equal to negative 4x minus 11. And so that is how we made those translations. But we just sort of made this designation arbitrarily. Therefore, when we solve for x, we have to make sure that this is in fact true. We have to make sure that this is in fact a case where 4x plus 11 is greater than or equal to zero. And this is in fact a scenario where 4x plus 11 is less than zero. And so you have to test your solutions. In other words, so on our left side here, 4 times 13 plus 11, that looks like it is greater than or equal to zero. So this answer here is legit. And then on our right side here, if we plug in negative 1, negative 4 plus 11 is not less than 0. And so this answer choice here is actually erroneous. And we only have one real solution here. And that actually changes our answer choice because it actually is sufficient. And so that is actually a good thing because that means we can eliminate three of our answer choices instead of just two. So if you were thrown off a bit by what we did there, our second statement looks fairly similar and we're going to do the same thing. So you get a second rack at it. And so statement two says the absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to x plus 8. So once again, we only have two scenarios for what the absolute value of 2x minus 5 could be. It's either equal to itself, 2x minus 5, or it is equal to 
the inverse, negative 2x plus 5. And so when 2x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0, that is the case where absolute value of 2x minus 5 is just equal to itself, is equal to 2x minus 5. And then when 2x minus 5 is less than 0, that is the scenario where absolute value of 2x minus 5 is equal to negative 2x plus 5. These are what we are replacing our absolute value sign with. And so on our left side, it should just be 2x minus 5 is equal to x plus 8. And then on our right side, it should be negative 2x plus 5 is equal to x plus 8. Remember, only the left side changes. Right side should stay the same. So let's solve these again. So here it looks like we get x is equal to 13 again. So if you're saying, okay, well, now you've seen the trick, and so now it looks like statement 2 is also going to be sufficient, and you might be asking, can I stop testing? I would say no. You have to fully complete your test. And it is not necessarily true that this is going to give the same result as statement one. So if we solve here for x, we get what? 3x is equal to negative 3. So x is equal to negative 1 again. But even though we got the same values for x as statement one, we're still not done. We still have to do our test. So plugging in x is equal to 13, do we in fact have a scenario here where 2x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 0, and it looks like we do. So this is legitimate again. But over here, plugging in a negative 1, it looks like negative 2 minus 5 is less than 0. And so this is also a legitimate solution here. And so what does this mean? And so here, our statement is insufficient. Why is that? And so this question here is not just a good absolute value question. It's a good just data sufficiency in a general question, because recall what our question is asking. It's asking, is x equal to 13? So the reason this is insufficient isn't because we got two different values for x. It is because we have one value that is equal to 13. So that gives us a yes to our question. And then we have one value that is not equal to 13. That gives us a no to our question, because each of these solutions was a valid the statement here is insufficient. And so that leaves us just A as our answer. And so in order to solve these absolute value equations algebraically, you just have to keep in mind this extra step of testing your solutions. And so I always like breaking them down into when my absolute value expression is greater than or equal to zero and when it is less than zero, because then I know I only have to manipulate the absolute value side of my equation. And so in the next video, we will start doing some more complicated absolute value problems, ones where I can't necessarily do algebra and may start having to consider testing numbers.